Welcome to Risky Fitness. Today we're going to be looking at Monstania, a Japan only RPG for the Super Famicom, which here in the West we all like to call the Super Nintendo. The Super Famicom is known for having an amazing library of RPGs. And thanks to a dedicated community of translators, many of these games have been translated to English. This particular translation was done by Aeon Genesis. My thanks to all the folks that helped to translate this game. This game was originally released in September of 1996, very late into the life cycle of the Super Famicom. It was developed by Pac-In Video, a small Japan-based developer. In 2003, they would merge with Marvelous and develop games in the Harvest Moon franchise. It was published by Bits Laboratory, a publisher who mostly was known for arcade ports for various consoles in Japan, and they're mostly known for the Cho Aniki franchise and a whole bunch of other lesser known titles, quite a few Turbo Graphics PC uh, engine, uh, whatever you want to call it, ports, that sort of thing. Details on the development and reception of Monstania are scarce and largely lost to time. Uh, with the help of some uh, Redditors, I was able to find a little bit of information in the form of Japanese blogs from gamers in Japan who seem to all echo the same sentiment that it's not a game they were familiar with at the time that it came out, so I don't think it was very heavily promoted. While info on many of the names in the credits are elusive, we can see that this game was directed by Yasunori Takahara, who also worked on the Choaniki series, and was an artist on several ports, including Game Ground, some Darius titles, and Altered Beast for the PC Engine. Kenji Koyama, one of the designers of Harvest Moon, worked on the character designs here, and Yasunori Takahara was a writer and designer using pseudonyms for each job he performed. So in addition to being the director, Takahara wore multiple hats working on this and other bits projects. Monstania tells the story of a boy named Fron who follows a glowing light into a world of adventure. Accompanied by his girlfriend Tia, the boy soon meets Chita, a curious child with a bowl on her head. They soon find a mysterious blue stone and are harassed by the bandits Barambat and Tania, who become the game's primary antagonists. Your quest to solve the mystery of the blue stone will take you to all the typical JRPG locales, a forest, a desert, a shrine, and a snowy village just to name a few, all set in the eponymous island of Monstania. The story moves along very quickly and is sloppily told in some places. It's full of cartoonish humor and is largely a playable Saturday morning cartoon, just the kind of game that was popular among kids in Japan at the time. It's also very short. You can complete the game in about four to five hours of total gameplay time. It would have made for a great weekend rental, but game rentals were not legal in Japan at the time. Could you imagine paying full retail price for a four-hour game? I am never going to financially recover from this. The release price of this game was 7,800 yen, which, converted to USD and adjusted for inflation, is about $60 in today's money. Did you pay me in advance? The music and sound are excellent, and they really show off what the NES sound chip is famous for. Some sounds, like the crickets on the title screen, are particularly impressive. Composer Noriyuki Iwate created the soundtrack. You have almost definitely heard Iwate's work. His resume includes several games in the Super Smash Bros. franchise, as well as some Phoenix Wright games, Grandia 1 and 2, Lunar 2 Eternal Blue, and many more for various consoles through the 90s all the way up to 2018. The graphics are colorful with large cartoon-like sprites that have tons of character and detail. It really drives home the overall Saturday morning anime feel. Reminds me a lot of like the Toriyama stuff. It's not spectacular, but it is absolutely effective in establishing that feeling of fun and childhood adventure. Among Monstania's artists are Naoko Sakurada and Koji Surunaga, who would design art for the Lunar series and a few other lesser-known titles. Monstania is a strategy RPG, but a much simpler one than what we're used to. Instead of having huge battlefields full of a wide variety of units, the player controls only two characters at a time, though the number of enemies does vary and some of the areas are pretty large. 
You'll have to take advantage of obstacles on the terrain and use a number of different special attacks to defeat your foes. The UI is very simple. At the top of their screen, there's a life bar for each character with a number of hit points displayed next to it. Next to that is the character's AP, points which are consumed whenever an ability is used. Managing AP is definitely challenging, but it can be restored in a number of ways. By pressing the Y button, you can skip your turn and recover one AP. You can also gain AP by using some items or switching between your two characters. That's right. The player controls one character at a time, and either character taking an action counts as the player's turn. However, the inactive character recovers one AP for every action taken by the other character. Movement is very simple. It uses tank controls, and moving one square counts as one turn. All the enemy units will also move at the same time as the player character, which makes battles move along much more quickly than your typical SRPG. Attacks are performed simply by pressing the A button, and a menu is only needed to do special attacks, or use items. While some attacks allow you to choose a target, most are simply performed in the direction in which the character is facing and attack any enemy in their path. Don't be fooled by the rather simple gameplay. Some of the encounters are very challenging. Instead of enemies, some stages have light puzzle solving. These usually aren't too hard, but I have to admit that some of them took me longer than I would like to admit. The progression of the game is completely linear with no travel to speak of. After a stage is finished, each character gains a level. There are no towns or shops. Instead, there are specific rewards the player receives after each battle. Curative items are incredibly scarce, which can be a real problem later in the game when your healing items begin to dwindle. Luckily, even KO status can be reversed through the use of an item, and every character has the ability to recover a significant amount of hit points by spending five action points on the universal recover ability. The one exception to the game's linear format is a point where you can choose not to go into the Forest of Mystery. If you choose not to go, instead you'll go to the Temple Ruins. These choices have no impact on the outcome of the game. Instead, it just determines which character will temporarily join you. While the three main characters are Fran, Tia, and Chitta, other characters will sometimes join you for a short time. This adds some variety to the gameplay as the temporary characters have different weapons and abilities from the main cast. Monstania's programmer, Masashi Shimizu, would go on to work for Bandai Namco and join the Dark Souls team, helping to create Dark Souls 2 and 3 and Elden Ring. I had fun playing Monstania. It was a simple and quick game that I was able to complete in a few nights and a lighthearted adventure that is enjoyable for people of all ages. For physical media collectors, you can find the translation on a repro cart on eBay or other reseller sites. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. I go very deep into the details of the games that I cover, so if you want to really, really dig deep into the minutia of classic games, enable those notifications. If you would like to hear more from me, please also check out my podcast, The Console Kingdom. Links are in the description. Thank you, and until next time, game over.